Camping can be a relaxing escape, but you might encounter something in the wild that'll make you never want to pitch a tent ever again. So sit back and relax to the sounds of rain while I go through some creepy camping stories. They are playing my song. A couple of years ago, my brother bought a large piece of land out in the middle of nowhere about 30 miles or so from cell phone reception. It's quiet, there is no light pollution, no paved roads, and not a lot of people around. Shortly after he bought the place, two of my brothers, me and our families, spent a weekend camping on the land and doing our best to clean it up. People had used it as a dump and there were many downed trees. On the second night we camped there, I woke up in the middle of the night to take a leak. As I was walking to the bushes in the dark, I realized that I could faintly hear music. This didn't strike me as odd, because I knew my brother had a radio in his camper. I finished up and went back to sleep, with no further thought on the matter. The next morning at breakfast, I mentioned the radio and music. Several other people recalled waking in the night and hearing music, but no two people heard the same music. Finally, the brother who brought the radio woke up. I asked him about the music and he seemed a bit freaked out. He woke up some time during the night and went outside to smoke. He heard music as well and had assumed it was someone else. I should mention that he was the only one with a generator and a radio. It wasn't his radio we heard. It wasn't anyone else's either. I've been back several times, but I'm a bit freaked out by this place at night. I have fun while I'm there, but I'm always armed and I don't sleep in a tent anymore. I sleep in my SUV with the doors locked it may seem kind of dumb, but realizing that everyone heard different music when there are no people, no functional radios, and no electricity is quite creepy. Footsteps. This wasn't camping exactly, but I managed a resort in the Adirondack for several years. This place is old and rustic. It's miles from civilization and very peaceful. It was built in the twenties and had somewhat of a sordid past. It was built for a Canadian senator who would run rum down from Canada during prohibition. We still had the underground locked safe room where he would store the booze, as well as hidden booze hiding areas underneath some of the cabins. Calvin Coolidge stayed at the camp across the pond during his presidency and would visit my camp. Anyway, I met a girl and decided to sleep out under the stars on the camp's peninsula when it started to rain. So I suggested we sleep on the screened-in porch of the boathouse, which I thought was a pretty good compromise. So after we were all set up, it was getting pretty late, about 1.30am or so. We were laying there, and I was all toss and turn, because I'd been asleep and woken up. So I have a hard time falling asleep after stuff like that. We'd lain there for about half an hour or so, when I hear the bathroom door in the bathhouse. It couldn't have been anything else but that door. I did all the maintenance on those old buildings, and oiling that particular door was on my work list for the next day. My first thought was my boss, the owner of the camp. She is notoriously noisy and has been known to spy on staff in their staff quarters. So she was my first logical thought as to who made the noise. Why she would have been hiding out in the men's bathroom in the boathouse for over an hour is beyond my comprehension. I proceed to hear footsteps walking across the boathouse, down the three stairs onto the dance floor, 
and stopping right in front of the door to the screened-in porch. I lay there, just waiting for the door to open and my boss to call my name. And as the minutes stretched out, I started praying that she would open the door, walk away, sneeze, dance the funky chicken, anything, nothing. The rest of the night, I stayed up, stiff and straight as a poker in my sleeping bag. No receding footsteps, no door noises, no nothing. My girlfriend, I, the night, and the empty boathouse. The next morning, my girlfriend, she wasn't at the time, but she was the four years that followed, rolled over to me and immediately asked about the footsteps the night before. She had also stayed up the night, waiting for some other sound to explain those footsteps in the night, and heard nothing. She was terrified, never went into that boathouse again. I, unfortunately, had to go into the boathouse on a daily basis. Everything was cool during the day. At night, I had to turn all the lights in the camp off. This is something I've done every night for the past three years. However, after there was always a sense of dread going in there, being alone in the dark in the boathouse. The worst part is that there is an enormous hanging bed in there, in front of the fireplace. It was for the former camp owners to take naps on in the day, hung on chains, so that the bed can be lifted out of the way for entertaining guests in the evening. Every single night, that bed was swinging. 175 pound bed, swinging on its chains in the dark of the boathouse until my last day at that camp. If I went at night, that bed was swinging. Ghost of Antietam One summer, I helped the Boy Scout troop I was a part of. I received my Eagle Award two years before, but wasn't particularly active afterwards. I liked camping. They needed a few leaders. And we took the troop down to Antietam National Battlefield. A number of other troops had also come down for the weekend, and we had a weekend full of Civil War education, reenactments, and troops pranking other troops. All of the troops were camped along Antietam Creek on the other side of the Burnside Bridge Road. It was pretty easy for anyone to cross the road and walk onto the battlefield to go up to Burnside's Bridge along the creek and see the field where the Union soldiers massed and tried to cross the bridge. I grew up outside Gettysburg, so ghost stories about Antietam didn't bother me at all. There's enough weird tales in Gettysburg that other battlefields really didn't face me. The second night we're there, the troops all hit the hay early, due to the fact that they were made to march all day by an overzealous reenactor. I took a walk over to the bridge right after dinner, and the sun was slowly sinking towards night. It was actually quite beautiful, seeing the field and the creek. I walked up to the bridge and started to walk across it, when I felt an excruciating sharp pain in my chest. I almost doubled over in pain and clenched my chest. I thought maybe I was having a heart attack, but both of my arms were fine and free to move. I put both hands on the part of my chest that hurt, and felt another sharp pain below the top of my right shoulder. The pain came and knocked me down, where I almost cracked my head open on the side of the stone bridge. I laid there, freaking out, and scrambled to my feet and booked it back to camp. I got back to camp and had another scoutmaster take a look at my chest, and I have two raised red lumps that under my skin you could see were turning into blood blisters. He asked me what I was doing, and I told him that it just happened when I was walking around the battlefield. Not once had I thought about any kind of haunting. I called it an evening, and turned in. The next morning, after breakfast, the troops were scheduled to meet with the park official at Burnside's Bridge. 
Our troops and about four others stood on the battlefield facing towards the bridge where the park official was detailing the history of the battle. I found out that Confederate sharpshooters took up position on the other side of the creek and on the side where we were all at was the Union. The Union soldiers were supposed to take the bridge and were just picked off left and right on that bridge. Confederates lost somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 soldiers and the Union lost over 15,000. No Union soldier ever made it past the halfway point of that bridge. At this point, my scoutmaster just looks at me and I'm wondering what the hell happened the night before. The Crying Girl When I was younger, probably like 10 or 11, I went camping with my family. I'll just get right into it. It was about 1 or 2 in the morning, and I couldn't really sleep. The tent me and my brother were in was really hot and very uncomfortable. Anyway, while I was trying to go to bed, I heard a very faint whimper. I tried to ignore it, because I figured I was just tired. Our campsite was along a road with many other camps nearby. The whimper started to get louder, and then turned into crying. I heard footsteps outside of our tent, and a girl crying her eyes out. Now let me tell you, it didn't go faint. It got louder and louder. It remained in the same spot the entire time. That's important, because it indicates that she was looking at our tent, crying. It gets worse. Then it turned into full-on screams for a few seconds, then cuts out. When she started screaming, my brother woke up. We both look at each other and just get all the pillows and stuff our heads under them. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I'm just glad we left in the morning. Thank you for listening. The next time you go camping, make sure you have a weapon. And make sure the girl crying outside your tent is a ghost first. If you like what you've heard, consider subscribing so you never miss a creepy story.